Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Doodle Robot, and today for a viewer request, we are going to uh, talk about and discuss and demo and all that, etc. I don't know if this is going to be one or two parts. Satin glazing liquid in coloring books. Um, mostly I use satin glazing liquid uh, for two purposes in Amazon print books and in my mythographics because I want to get rid of the found objects. So uh, first we'll talk about some of my testing and samples. I think I missed my calling as a scientist, but I have to test all these, all these pink things are where I'm like testing and taking notes on products. I, I keep copious, I keep copious notes of like everything I do since I'm new to coloring. I want to remember the successes and the failures, like what to do, what not to do. So I do, I do keep a pretty good written record here, but today we're going to discuss that record in terms of satin glazing liquid. So, um, I'll, I'll show some of my works and what I learned that were good points to like redo and what were bad points not to do again in regards to satin glazing liquid. And then we'll start the demo and then on how to put satin glazing liquid onto your coloring book. So if you just want to fast forward to that part and not hear all my like discoveries, <laughs> um, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. And then after we put the satin glazing liquid on the paper, we let it dry. I'll show, probably show water-based markers on top of the satin glazing liquid and Crayola colored pencils on top as that is my viewer request. I may also show watercolor. We'll see how it goes. I, we'll see how long it's getting um, and whether maybe I do one part or two parts, we'll see. So that's what's happening today. All right, so um, Creative Haven Butterflies, this was my first book I purchased sometime in February. I actually put pencil to paper on February 15th, but I think I had the book a little while before that. I think it was like parent-teacher conferences and I didn't have time to get to it. Um, so, and you can see, I mean, this is when I started coloring and on February 16th is when I started my first test page. Uh, last page, dumb heart. I don't like hearts. <laughs> it's, I'm not a 13 year old girl. I don't like hearts in my coloring books, but no offense if you do, you do you, it's fine. Um, so my first test page, and I don't think I had satin glazing liquid there, but I would encourage people, I teach art, and I would encourage people to test, 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 experiment away, sacrifice a few pages for that. You can tell this is my first coloring book. It's got one colored page and three test pages of experiments. So I binged watch like crazy probably for a good month before I even bought a coloring book because I live in the middle of nowhere didn't even know where to get a coloring book we only have a Walmart and a dollar store um and I didn't realize you could get coloring books at those places <laughs> until I found one later um so here I'm just I'm testing let's see here in this part, I'm testing watercolor washes and then with Prismacolor over them at this time, all I had was Prismacolor. Here I'm testing acrylic washes because, is it Dee Dee Williamson? Dee Dee something, I'm sorry. Um, said you could, if you do your watercolor washes light, you can do acrylics, uh, I'm sorry, color pencil over them. And yes, that's true. Works really well. Here I'm testing, I don't know, I must have seen a video about it because I didn't have anything. I'm testing um, whiting something out and coloring over it. But as you can see, which would happen in your mythographic books if you want to white out those stupid hidden objects, um, when you then color over it, it severely lightens the color pencil. All right, more tests, etc. Here is where I'm testing satin glazing liquid on a page. I'd already watercolored the background blue. I'd already p colored a few things. I colored all the butterflies. It wasn't going well, so. And I, I was trying to do, like, I hadn't bought the matte 
acrylic paints yet. These are just normal acrylic paints. I was trying to do those. It wasn't going well, but <laughs> with normal acrylic paints, like the shiny kind. Um, and so I'm like, when I got my satin glazing liquid, I'm like, oh, I'll just paint it over it. Okay. First, first thing you're not supposed to do with satin glazing liquid is paint it over your Prismacolors. They smudge all over the place. So don't do that. <laughs> do it on your page first. Um, it does say that on the bottle. I guess I didn't believe the bottle because I just like did it, you know, with wild abandon. And then I think I started um, doing lots of experiments. Like here I'm experimenting with my Ahuhu markers. And you can see, maybe, is that in screen? If you, if you use a brush that's like not soft bristle, you may get lines in, in your work from the satin glazing liquid. And we'll discuss brushes when we get to where I'm actually painting the satin glazing liquid on the papers. And I'll show you what happened there. Um, but yeah, the Ahuhu water-based markers are going over it really well. I mean, look at that blend. Nice, smooth blend, I think. Really well. Weird pencil. Uh, weird paintbrush marks in the back there. Sorry. I have been sick for like three weeks. And I took a decongestant and mucinex so I wouldn't be like all mucusy and coughing for this video. So I may have to blow my nose occasionally. I apologize for that, but I did want to get this up. Here's where this looks like watercolor right here. And it's working well. Watercolor lifts super easily on satin glazing liquids. So if you were going to do a coat of watercolor and another coat of watercolor, you'd probably end up washing the first coat away. So you have to be really careful. Although if you're just kind of like tapping it on like I did there with the flowers, that would work. And I'll show you some more like that. So this is like my first satin glazing liquid um, test page. I, there's no, oh, there is some satin glazing liquid somewhere. I think it's in this, <laughs> it's in this thing here. I circled it and I'm doing more tests. The rest of the page is just tests with all kinds of other mediums. I really, I bought satin glazing liquid because I really wanted to use watercolor in my coloring books. Uh, the problem with watercolor is it like soaks in immediately and you end up with, I don't even know what to call that, like watermarks basically. Like it's not smooth, you end up with these watermarks, which if you can figure out how to use that effectively, that could be a good technique to use in your coloring books. So here I was trying to figure out a way to use that effectively. And so I was doing these these like stripes here. So how, how much can you get done in like one coat before you have to take a break and dip your brush back in the watercolor paint to get more? Because in the time that you do that, you'll end up with a line. So I was experimenting with purpose lines, lines that are on purpose here, because once you paint over it and then start your next row of paint, I guess we'll say, uh, that's just going to make that line darker. So that could be used effectively, maybe in like water or something, but you're going to have to really plan ahead on that. So that was the whole reason I bought the satin glazing liquid was watercolor, and then I haven't used it very much. I discovered quite quickly that... Um, Water-based markers are easier than watercolor on top of the satin glazing liquid. But here's my first, my first attempt, like I hit a home run the first time out with the satin glazing liquid. And this was wise. So on this paper, this is a nice little town book. And I bought it to use in the Amazon paper because I did this one. This was my first Amazon paper coloring. And, oh my gosh, gave myself carpal tunnel. I mean, it came out good, but I had to put, like, so much effort and work into it. And I didn't have a Prismacolor blender pencil yet, which I, I don't particularly like the blender pencil. But I just had to do it with colors, and yeah, it, was, it was so much trouble. And my wrist hurt for days and days afterwards. Uh, so, I'm then like, I'm going to use <laughs> satin glazing liquid, because I think that will work for colored pencils. And it does, and we'll talk about that in just a second here. So I did one coat, 
two coats. If I hold that down, you can see it, three coats. You do three coats and everything you do on top is just gonna slide off, including your color pencils. Two coats was the sweet spot, two thin coats. Now if you're over exuberant, like I was in some of my books, which I'll show you, I thought I was doing two coats, but they were two thick coats, which had, had sliding pencil issues there. Uh, one coat just wasn't enough to get the effects I was looking for. So you can see the difference, I think, in color pencil here. And this is probably Prismacolor. So like here, you still get those white spots. Wasn't blending, but here is much smoother, a lot less white spots. So now Prismacolor on top of satin glazing liquid feels like pastel pencils. So something to keep in mind. But here's my full on experiment. Like I said, on this one, I feel like I hit a home run right away. All right, so two thin coats of satin glazing liquid, and it will, it will shrink your paper. As you can see here, I'm holding, I'm holding the paper, and you can see a white line. I painted to the edge of the paper. There's no white lines there. That's because it has shrunk. I mean, you're using a wet medium on it, at first it stretches out the page and the page seems like it's going to be bigger than all the other pages. And then over time, the page will shrink. Okay. So two thin coats worked great. Prismacolors worked really well on top of that. But I, like I said, they feel like pastel pencils, not pastel colored pencils, pastel pencils with all that. I don't like pastels. They have all that dust. It's all over your house. Uh, you'll need to invest in a brush and sweep that stuff away. But I mean, it did work. It did work rather well here. The pastel, uh, the, sorry, the Prismacolor pencils are the blue and the pink on the lady's headdress. The seahorse and the, these kind of green brown colors and the oranges are Crayola colored pencils. At that point I invested, after doing this page, I invested in a 24 pack of Crayola colored pencils because I'm like, oh, we need a much harder lead to really smoosh the fibers of the Amazon print paper down to get rid of those white spots. And Crayola color pencils work great on naked. I wouldn't say great. You gotta work hard at it, but they work well to get rid of those white spots easier than say with a soft leaded pencil like Prismacolor. They work better on top of the satin glazing liquid. So you'll see my experiments here. Let's find my notes for that. Um, nice little town advertisement. Okay, so my notes here, satin glazing liquid, Prismacolor over satin glazing liquid, pastel pencil feel, like feel. Some white spots still left, like you still have to work to get rid of the white spots, but it's much easier than on the naked uh, Amazon paper. Satin glazing liquid with watercolor wash, then Crayolas feel like Prismas. Uh, it also works without the, the watercolor wash base either way. Satin glazing liquid with watercolor wash, then Prismacolor. Uh, I, my note says feels like oil pastel, too mushy and messy. So there must be something in the watercolor pencils that's causing that feel. Crayola black pencil works great to put lines back in because you can sharpen it to a really fine point and put black paint on last. Okay, so the other stuff is just the order I did things in. Two coats satin glazing liquid, use on all creative space books. Yeah, okay, so, so here I think I did, I'm not sure if I did a watercolor wash here first. I think I wanted to test it both ways. I think I did it on the fish. I'm not sure if I did it there. This is like 10 months ago, so. But you can see, if I hold it really close, you can see that the Crayola colored pencils here in the orange fish, which are all the Crayolas from my 24 set, have that look to them that you get from Prismacolors. 
Uh, now this is looking a little mushier and scratchier here, looks more like pastels. But if we compare it, say, to this book here, which uses Prismacolor, it's got that, it's a little different, but it's close, and we're not using color to color, oh, here we go, color to color. Um, it's got that same look about it. It's close. I mean, it's not exact. Nothing is exact, but it's got that same little look that I like from the Prismacolors. It's like almost, it's not a texture because it's smooth, but almost that little textury look. So, all right. Um, I also did it on the green areas. In some areas, I experimented with a lighter touch, just really light, like not burnished versus the burnished look there. Yeah, I think they work really, really well. Here again, I'm not sure if that's Crayola or Prismacolor, but uh, really light touch without burnishing. And then there's some metallic watercolor on there. So, so yeah, my first, my first really try page was a home run. And then there were some not successes after that and I'll tell you why so I'm then like okay great I'm gonna prep so I prepped four Amazon books assembly line style and instead of being really conservative and putting two very thin layers on <laughs> I just squirted the satin glazing liquid on and painted it and of course I didn't think I forgot about my about this test got a little careless and so you know two thick layers probably equals the three thin coat test that I did here and stuff was sliding all over them so I'll show you the different outcomes here probably this being the worst outcome Although it did force me to like use other mediums. So this is Colors for Life. Here, too much satin glazing liquid. And then I tried to watercolor. Look at how buckled the paper is. I tried to watercolor paint over that. Like watercolor color slid all over the place. It was a disaster. And so then I had, and you can see it like, like you can hopefully see how buckled that paper is. Um, so then I just had to like cover it in one one Crayola colored pencil. So I just did the background flat. A flat color all the way through. Now on this particular page I was, I had been working on some big pages and I was a little tired of doing a whole bunch of pencil blending. So I opted to just try the water-based markers on top of there. I don't think, I don't think I blended them a lot. I think I just put them down in a flat wash. You have time to get a nice flat you're not going to have any streaks or anything in your water-based markers. And then I just did gel pens on top of them. So you've got to be really careful with putting your thin coats of satin glazing liquid on the paper. Or maybe one, perhaps one thick coat would equal two thin coats. I don't know. You'd have to experiment. So that was an experiment that went awry. Although I did get to kind of do my first experimenting with gel pens, which I rather liked, and then I have bought, I've bought a lot since then. So, this was the page I did first, and then I realized that, oh, it must be because I got too much satin glazing liquid on there. Now, on this one, I wanted to try, you know, I'm always experimenting, so I wanted to try the Gamsol, because I finally bought some Gamsol, and I put one coat of Crayola in the background here and try to do Gamsol with it. And the Gamsol, in most places, except where maybe there was just too much satin glazing liquid, was pretty luscious, looked pretty nice. Except it wasn't because of my satin glazing liquid. It wasn't um, nice everywhere. So then I did a second coat with the Crayola colored pencils. And you can see... They worked better in some places than in others, but such is life. So now, and this is when I discovered, this was the first time I used, and you can see here, it came out beautifully, 
I use the Ohuhu water-based markers. Those are the only water-based markers I have. I would imagine you could use other kinds of water-based markers. I, those are the only kind I have, though. And some Tombos, which seem exactly like Ohuhu water-based markers. Just more expensive. Um, they came out great on the fish, and I did put two coats. Like, I put the one coat, and then, like, the next day when it was dry, doesn't take that long to dry, I think I did another coat just to make it more intense. All these fishes have Ohuhu water-based markers on them. I think perhaps this coral does too, this piece, this weird plant thing. Oh, by the way, in this, this is 50 Ocean Miniatures. The only thing that was on this page was the octopus, this angler fish, I don't know if I'm good, these fish, and the bubbles. Everything else I drew on. And I drew it on after I sat and glazing liquided it. I said that funny, but you get, you get the right idea. Uh, you can use pencil over it, and it does erase off pretty well. Um, and then I did pin over that, which is probably the best way you should do it. In one of my mythographic books, I, I did the drawing, and then I did the pin, and then I put the satin glazing liquid on, and it made the marker run, which is a permanent marker. It was a Sakura. It says it's permanent, but it made the pin run. So you probably should do your pin after you satin glaze liquid. Okay, so... Then, because I had too much, the prismic, uh, the, the Crayolas weren't working as well as they usually do. I did try Prismacolor here, where there's a lot of satin glazing liquid on the page. This is in the sand. And because I couldn't find colors in Crayola that I liked for sand. So, I tried it with Prismacolor. It made this very grainy almost even worse than if I had just done it on the naked paper. Um, just makes it super hard to blend because the Prismacolors are just too soft. However, happy accident, I guess, because the, it works for sand. Probably the only place it would have worked. Let's see. Some things, this looks like probably... This one is a mix here, I think, of markers... Uh, hoo hoo markers and Crayola pencils. It looks like I don't know. Something looks like it's happening here. It didn't look like that before. It looks like something is that in camera? Sorry. It looks like something is happening here, like it's vanishing or disappearing or something. It's probably due to the satin glazing liquid. I don't know. What did I do there? Let's see. This is a new, a new discovery on my part. 50 Ocean Miniatures. Okay, let's see. What is that? That is Coral on right, bottom left, tree thing. A hoo hoo. So that looks like, it's right here. A hoo hoo number 17, 12, 95. Plus 5 and 41. It looks like that's totally just a hoo hoo water based markers, and it does seem to be coming up a bit there, which is interesting. It's not here, but maybe there's more satin glazing liquid there. It looks like there is because look at the look at the Prismacolor there behind it, like I had such such a hard time. So interesting. All right, so I learned a lot on this page from too much satin glazing liquid. Uh, Crayola color pencils sliding off. Here, I had just received my Neo 2 colors, and I put a base, because I'm like, why are these sliding around? I'll add more stuff. No, not a good idea. I put a Neo 2 color base on these corals here, and then I proceeded to color them with probably Crayola. Um, and that was super hard. Same problem as here with the Prisma colors. So yeah, a lot learned, a lot learned on this page. So be careful of too much satin glazing liquid. Um, since I, you know, figured that this whole batch was ruined due to too much satin glazing liquid, I just decided to do this page with mostly a hoo-hoo water-based markers. 
a little bit of colored pencil for like shading on the Wendigo thing there. Um, a little bit of colored pencil on top of the Ahuhu water base markers here on the trees just to give it that like interesting texture. Lots of gel pens, acrylic paint markers. I think the flowers here are just Crayola colored pencil. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's Crayola or Prismacolor. Let's see. What is this? This is Mythological Monsters. Oh, I don't think I... When did I finish that? July. I don't think I marked that one. Anyways, there's very little, very little color pencil on here. Uh, because mostly I was having a good time with just the water-based markers. Now, if you're doing a big, huge area, notice here, this is a Tombow water-based marker. It does leave a little bit of streaking. I just couldn't get it because it was such a big area. Get it quick enough. But a lot less than if you were doing it on naked paper. And then gel pins. There's some gel pins and some watercolor, metallic watercolor paint. They go over it fine. No problems whatsoever. No difference. Okay. And in my Reptiloids book, which is also Satin Glazing Liquid, here, this is Prismacolor, and I must have done better here. I must have gotten a lot less, because the Prismacolor worked around. It was a little slidey, but I couldn't find the colors I wanted in my Crayola, so I used Prismacolors, and it, it, it worked fine, much like in the, uh, the Lady in the Nice Little Town book. So, And then there's lots of um, water-based marker and gel pen, Mostly is everything else, like the leaves here, water-based marker. They seem to be holding up okay, not disappearing like in the other book. Okay, so let's talk about, quickly, this is getting long, maybe a two-parter, we shall see. Um, my experiments in the mythographic books with satin glazing liquid, for the purposes of covering those found objects. So, you can see found objects here a little bit. Now, I think the I think the only Prismacolor here is this, the pink sky in the background. Possibly. Um, because I just wanted to test it. So what I did was I, just with a white Posca pen, or white acrylic paint, or even a hoo hoo acrylic paint marker, those will all work to cover up your found objects. But the problem the acrylic paint has is that you can't then color over it. Because remember that thing I showed you in my test, in my first test book here? Where is it? Right here. That's just acrylic paint. You can't color over that with colored pencils. So I forgot about that test and I had to try it again. So I, I whited out all the, all the found objects. I then proceeded to color over with my Prismacolors and I'm like, oh, it's so much lighter. And so I erased it. I put a satin glazing liquid over it and then proceeded to color. So same, same kind of thing. The Prismacolors, you know, look like pastel color pencils and the, um, I think most everything else is Crayola colored pencil. It, now, if you Crayola colored pencils are very hard leaded pencils, so if you're going at it really hard, like I have a heavy hand when I color, you could end up removing the the acrylic paint underneath the satin glazing liquid. So there were a few places I had to ease back a little bit. Um, so. I think, I mean, it came, it came out okay here. This is just mostly colored pencil, so it's a lot of work, though. I'm not sure. I don't know about these mythographic books. But anyways, okay, we're going to talk about the page I hate. The one I said we would never, ever talk about again, but we're going to talk about it here because it does have satin glazing liquid on it. It's horrible. I hate it. But there were some successes we can say on top of the satin glazing liquid there if you want to see all the things that went wrong you can watch my november december pages 
However, this was the first time I successfully used watercolor. This purple moon is watercolor on top of the satin glazing liquid. Like I said, it's, it's problematic because you can put watercolor down, but then you lift it right back up again. So it's hard. But in something like a moon that's very blotchy and textury, I guess we'll say, it worked great. I used it to great effectiveness there just because of the way the moonscape because of the way the moonscape is. So I was very pleased with that. I'd like to be able to do that again. A lot of this is Ohuhu water-based markers and or perhaps, I don't think I used any Tombows. Works great on there. I thought it worked really well in the hair, although I'm not sure I like the color of her hair, but it worked great. You can see some of the found objects there poking through because it's just an Ahuhu. It's a one layer of Ahuhu water-based marker there. I also tried alcohol markers. Her whole dress here, the purpley stuff, is alcohol markers. And it's interesting because it has a very watercolor effect of the alcohol markers, which was unexpected to me because alcohol, you know, um, dries instantly. But even if you go over it, you can kind of re-wet the, the pigment of the alcohol. I mean, the alcohol has dissipated, but you can move that pigment around a little. It's got a watercolor effect. It's totally interesting. It will probably wreck your alcohol marker nibs a little bit. And maybe your water-based marker nibs a little bit. I don't know. I don't have anything terribly expensive that I have to worry about. But um, yeah, and again, gel pens worked fine over it. Okay, so that's my talking. <laughs> that's my talking about all my experiments with the satin glazing liquid and different mediums on top of it. So I'm going to pause the video and get set up to do some satin glazing liquid on a page to show you how to paint it. So let me, I'm going to push pause and I'll be back with you in a second. All right, we're back. Set up for painting our satin glazing liquid pages. Like I said, I usually do it in batches. So I found two images that I want to satin glazing liquid. Oh, sorry, that I want to satin glaze liquid. Um, I'm only going to do one on camera, but I'm going to do both since I have the stuff out. So a couple of things. You're going to need some water, clean water. You're going to need your satin glazing liquid. I bought bought it a long time ago, like 10, 11 months ago, eight ounces. And it's still, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's still more than slightly more than half full. So I don't know, seems, seems like a good value. You can, like I said, remember those pages that went bad where I just poured the satin glazing liquid right on the page? I'm not going to do that again. Although that seems like less mess to clean up. Um, I, it, it involved too much satin glazing liquid on, on the pages. So uh, you can use a palette. This is the only palette I have left from like college, I think, high school, college. Uh, but I still use this often. Like I said, I used to have a bunch more. This is the only one I have left. You can pour, pour your satin glazing liquid in something like this to dip out of. I am not going to use that because I don't want to clean that up. I'm going to use a guacamole cup. I save little cups like this for painting and stuff. I also have some dollar store containers that are very small like this with nice, nice tight lids that I can save paint if I want to use it from time to time to time. I don't want it to dry out. So today I'm just going to use my guacamole cup and then chuck it when I'm done. So I like to make my life simple. Uh, remember I talked about on the page with the streaks? because I think I used this brush to paint it on. Notice, look at the rough condition of this brush. Now this brush is great for some things. I This is a well-loved brush. Looks much better than this brush from like high school, college. <laughs> they don't make stuff like this anymore. This is still synthetics, but you can see when I didn't take care of my brushes as well. But I mean, this brush is like 30 years old. It's going strong, nice and soft. That's what you want, a nice, soft bristle brush. Not something with the hard bristles that is like kind of separating and stuff like this. Although, I do, you know, this is great for painting your house. It's not going to work for satin glazing liquid, though. Okay? You'll need some paper towels, most likely. 
sop up messes, stuff like that. And then you'll have to have some kind of paper. I don't recommend printer paper like we all use to put between our books. That's probably not best for this particular application. I have some, I have a big, I have a big, no, that's not it. I have a big uh, thing of palette paper, which is super old. I think it's like from my grandmother. It's really old. It's yellowed a certain amount. Maybe it's not from my grandmother. I don't know. Maybe I used all of that one. This might be mine from like 30 years ago. It lasts forever. I still have a huge amount of it on the pad. You could stick that between your, you can see where I've been painting on top of it. You don't have to throw this away once this stuff is used, palette paper. You can reuse it over and over and over again. This is a relatively new one for me. The paint dries and it's not gonna lift up acrylic paint. Acrylic, not oil or watercolor. Acrylic, it's not gonna lift up. You could just keep pouring over and over and over until you know it's saturated and you throw it away. Um, but you're gonna need something to stick between it. And what I use, and a cheap, a cheap alternative for palette paper, which is probably expensive at Michael's, you can use what I have here is parchment paper. If you want to use parchment paper as palette paper, you can. This is what I cook on at home. In my classrooms, I used to buy the humongous box of freezer paper for my students and I would trim it into little pieces and just put it on a plastic plate so that when they go to clean up, you know, it's hard to get kids to clean things. They can just chuck that piece of that little piece of freezer paper in the in the trash and be done. So parchment paper, freezer paper, wax paper can all work in place of palette paper. And since you probably already have those things in your house, I recommend you use those. I'm going to stick the parchment paper between my books behind my pages so that I'm not getting getting my satin glazing liquid on top of my other pages. And you will have to, you don't want, you don't want the, <clears throat> the paper to stick to the paper, the backer paper that you use, whatever that may be. So you'll have to lift it up occasionally and make sure it's not sticking. But you can see where I've used this parchment paper because it's big for lots of, lots of different projects. I've used it many times for satin glazing liquid. That's clear. You can't see it. But I've also used it for regular painting colors, whatever I may be doing. All right, so we've got an Amazon print book, 50 Marvelous Dragons by uh, Camilla Angel Kova. And the other one I'm going to prep, not on camera, is 50 Jungle Miniatures by the same artist. That one. This is probably the one I'm going to demonstrate on. So I'm going to do those two in, you know, assembly line style. Once you get all the stuff out, it just makes sense to do several pages rather than, you know, do one here and there. But whatever works for you, then they're ready. They're just sitting there waiting for you to use them. Okay, so one second. I'm getting hot. I have to take off my, I have layers. I have to take off my jumper here. All right, so before you ever dip your brush in anything, watercolor, acrylic, even oil paint, but with oil paint you have to use turpentine or mineral spirits or something, uh, you want to wet it. So I'm going to wet it in the water. I am going to, I've wet it in the water. I don't want a whole bunch of the satin glazing liquid to be watery, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wring it out a bit. I'm priming my brush to use it. I have no idea why you do that. I learned it in art college, you know, 35 years ago. I just know it works better, so do that. 
All right, so brush bristles are wet, ready to go. I am, I've got my page here ready to go. I'm going to, I don't think you need to shake this, but I don't know, can't hurt. I'm going to pour my satin glazing liquid into my cup here. That is probably way too much. I'm doing it this way because, like I said, when I just poured it on the paper before, it seemed to get too much, and my effects weren't like that home run that I hit the first time I used it. All right, so I'm just going to do two thin coats. I'm going to do one. We're going to have to let it dry, and then I'm going to do another one. Do make sure that your, your paper is all the way in there. All right. I'm going to go in one direction for the first coat, and then the second coat I'll go in another direction. And this is going to, like I said, this is going to stretch out your paper. But then it will shrink back, and it will shrink back smaller. And hopefully you guys can see better. There's a whole bunch of bright lights on my paper. I can't, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing. But I generally go over the new place and then kind of go back over the old place just to make sure I'm getting full saturation, full coverage. I've tried to shoot a few how-to videos or color along videos they never go well like half the time i'm not in screen it's really hard to multitask like that so please bear with me if i'm ever out of screen or whatever my intentions are good i'm just not the greatest uh, filmer of such things yet Lots of practice needed. Okay, so hopefully I have full coverage. It's hard for me to see with all these bright lights and shadows that I'm casting because the light behind me is off and stuff like that. So hopefully I've got it everywhere. I'm going to pause and we will come back. I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours. I'm going to go do dishes and stuff like that. <laughs> you could blow it dry, I guess, if you're in a super hurry. I'm not. I don't have anything else to do. I'm going to throw my brush in the water because the satin glazing liquid will ruin your brush. I'm going to get set up to do my next page. And then I'll meet you back here in about a second, but for me it'll be a few hours, and I will let that dry. So, we'll see you soon. Okay, we're back. It's been a second for you. It's been several hours for me. I have done all kinds of housework. My house is in order, somewhat. So we're going to continue with um, the second coat, and... Before I went horizontally across the page, so this time I'm going to go vertically across the page. I'm going to open up my satin glazing liquid here. I didn't want it to dry out. I live in the desert. Okay, and I'm going to get my brush out of the water over here. Hopefully, it's now nighttime. Hopefully I'm not casting too many shadows here. All right, I'm just like before, I'm going to wring it out there. I don't want my satin glazing liquid to be all watery. Now you'll notice after the first time, ah, see, I'm not lying. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's a, it's a little bit longer than the page, the page in front of it. It also has a totally different texture and feel to it which is what you want all right so now we're going to paint it on vertically
Send a win, remember. Send a win. I don't know if you can hear it, but my washing machine's running in the background. Hopefully it is not making too much noise, but must be done. All right, and that is it. And again, you're gonna want to make sure that you, uh, when it's drying, you lift it up every once in a while so it doesn't stick to that paper underneath. I let mine dry overnight or even longer because you know I, li I like to prep them in advance. So we'll be back for demonstrating color pencil and water-based markers on there in just a second for you. It'll probably be tomorrow for me. See you soon. All right, so we are back with our freshly, well, not freshly, it's been, it's been like 48 hours, our freshly satin glazed liquided, I don't know how to say that, pages. So uh, now they will, they will curl a little, and actually mine were, I let them, I let them hang out way longer than I usually do, like nearly 24 hours. Mine were actually all curled up all the way to the edge here, but they've uncurled. I just set some heavy books on them for a little while. And as you work with your books, uh, they'll, they'll get flatter and flatter. You've seen my pages that I did this to before. None of them, none of them curl up like this anymore, so... It'll work its way out. So we did that one. You can't even tell unless you touch it and feel it because it has definitely a different feel. I mean, this feels like slick paper, I guess. It's got a soft feel to it, whereas this has a slightly textury feel to it. And, you know, we put two layers of paint on it so it's thicker as well. And I'm not sure because it's white on white if it's shrunk yet but like i said it will shrink so we did this one and we did the 50 marvelous dragons one um and i'm going to demonstrate and i had a little bit in my little guacamole cup i had a little bit left over so i just used the rest of that to do one in adorables oh but i don't have all my lights turned on so I did that one in Fedorables. All right, let me get my last light on here. Let's get you situated there. One second. All right, also have to turn the light off behind me or I cast a shadow. So. So yeah, we did those three. We're kinda, we kind of did it batch, so I'm set and ready to go anytime I want to pick one of these up and do it. For ease of seeing on the camera, I'm going to do the 
the bigger design just because that'll be easier for me to see and you to see I'm standing in the dark basically <laughs> with <laughs> lights on here bright lights that make it hard for me to see what I'm doing so we'll demonstrate on this one now it was it was requested that I demonstrate water-based markers and Crayola colored pencils on top of the satin glazing liquid so that's what we'll do I don't know I may or may not demonstrate watercolor I'm not very good at watercolor yet <laughs> that's the bane of my existence watercolor but I want to be better at it um, so we might we'll see but the video is already getting kind of long so maybe not I don't know we'll see how it goes now we're gonna do water-based markers first and I've got I'll zoom in in a second I've got my Ohuhu water-based markers here um, I think you could probably use any water-based marker. I don't know. I like a hoo-hoo. It has like this brush tip. And I bought it for the fine liners, which I never use. I felt when I got the brush tips, I'm like, oh, this is a brush tip. <laughs> so, like, I was all excited. And so rarely, rarely ever use the fine liners. Um, so I've got my colors uh, these are the colors I'm going to do the snake. It's going to be one of those yellow snakes because they exist, right? I don't know, <laughs> but that's what we're doing, I think. I'm going to test first. I always test. Test, test, test. So this is my test book here. And let's see, we've got... Uh, I'm going to go until this is all used up. It started out as a swatch book, but that quickly quickly went the way of the dodo. Um, I still got pages in here left to test on. There's space. I mean, a tree died for this book, so we're going to use it up until it's completely used up. It's an ancient book. It was a sketchbook. Got it upside down. Some sketches in there. I really need to take those out. But, um, yeah. Now, if I were doing normal paper, I'd, I would just test on here. However, it is important to note that um, because the satin glazing liquid is a whole different, you know, we've coated the paper and stuff. Whatever I test on here is not going to match what I do here. And I've even noticed that when I test here and then I go to color in a Creative Haven book, the colors are always lighter. So, and I was noticing that to a much more drastic extent with anything that I've put satin glazing liquid on. So I have prepared, I finally got smart about it, and prepared myself, I've got those in order, I don't want to get them out of order from lightest to darkest. Uh, I prepared myself a whole just sheet of sat, of two thin coat satin glazing liquid here, so that I could test and it would be relatively the same here, which is what I'm going to do. Now I also, this is my, this is my swatch book. It's got all my swatches in there. And here, this is my Ahuhu water-based markers here. These are a, you don't have to get a Ahuhu. I'm sure these are like a white labeling situation. You could probably get any number of companies would sell you the same thing. Uh, I just happen to like the Ahuhu brand. Everything I've gotten from them seems to work well. And so, you know, I stick with the good thing. Now, I wasn't that excited about them at first because these are the colors. This is the swatch they provided me, and I just filled them in. And it's typical, you know, you kind of got a whole bunch of colors that are like mid-range, a few darks, and a very few lights. Not enough of those things. But on the satin glazing liquid, it really makes it much lighter, and they become, I think, personally, a beautiful set of water-based markers. So... I, I got tired of guessing because they're, they're significantly lighter. Although, you can't, you know, with the third coat here, they're pretty much as, as saturated as they are over here. So if you want to make them, you know, super saturated, you, you have that opportunity. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyways. I got, oh, I got tired of kind of trying to guess what this color would be on top of, you know, the, the satin glazed liquid treated paper. So, because look at how much lighter it is. So I just went and made myself a whole sheet so I would know. 
All right, so we're going to set that aside. I've already picked out my colors. Um, I'm going to zoom you in super close here, except I forgot paper to put behind my paper here. So give me one second. I'll get some paper. It's probably not necessary. I don't think I've ever seen anything bleed through on something that was treated with satin glazing liquid, but I'm not going to take the chance. And I just reuse my papers over and over and over again. All right. Especially when I'm doing colored pencil anyways, because, you know, you're pressing hard with that. So we'll need it there. Okay, so let's zoom you in so we can test what we're going to do. I can kind of tell you the tentative plan for the page. Uh, the So, you know, I had to think carefully because I was almost going to do the flowers, these yellow to orange colors, and then I'm like, well, then that would be the focal point and what would, what would, what would become of the snake? <laughs> so I think the snake needs to be the focal point because, I mean, it's cool. It's a snake. All right, so I'm going to do him yellow. I these, these leaves here I think are going to be greens. The flowers are probably going to be uh, much more orange than the snake, into reds perhaps. I'm not sure about these two leaves. Maybe purples and reds or maybe blue-greens. I don't know yet. I think warm browns for the door and the steps, and maybe a cool brown for the tree branch. And then, I don't know if I'll do the background. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's where I'll do watercolor. So perhaps grass, a green, you know, represent grass down here, and then yeah, blue for the sky, most likely. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to, are you zoomed in enough? This usually doesn't go very well for me. I keep trying, but has yet to go well. All right, so we're going to practice with our water-based markers here. And you're going to want to get them all uncapped and ready. You don't have to be super quick, but, you know, if you have to uncap every single time, that's going to be, going to be a little tedious. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to start, I'm going to try it both from lightest to, am I in screen here? I'm going to try it from both lightest to darkest, and then we'll do it in the reverse. And you'll have to excuse me. It's really hard for me to see in these lights and I'm in the dark and I can tell there's a lot of satin glazing liquid on this paper. Because it doesn't want to it's pooling up a little. Hopefully on the one I just did, it's got less. And if you find that there's a line, I can't even see. Yeah, there's a line there. You can just go over and kind of blend it in. You've got time. I generally just work back and forth. I may not use this darkest color. It may be too much. And I may decide that I'll go over with a little pencil at the end. All right, so we tried that. Now I'm going to try, ooh, I think I got my darks mixed up here. No, I didn't. Okay. We're going to try darkest to lightest. I feel that usually works better. I like it better on colored pencil. But, you know, you can always work the way you want to work. I don't think there are any coloring book police.
Yep. I like that best. Okay, and hopefully I was in camera for that. I'm not sure I'm going to use the darkest of the dark color. Like I said, I may just do that with pencil later because it's a little more control. We'll see how it goes. All right. Nothing, nothing bled through there. Okay, so moment of truth here on the snake. Let's see. Let me get my pins in order here. All right, so my... I'm going to put that we got the light source here. So I think for this part, perhaps I'm going to work on the smaller part here. Uh, for this part of the snake, I'm going to put the dark edge over here and the light edge over here. And I'm going to go around the spots. I don't know what color his spots are going to be yet. Where I had more control with this, I feel like the satin glazing liquid here is thinner and I'm getting a better lay down with my markers. Definitely. It's definitely a better application here. I think it was more thick on my testing paper. So it blends super easy. Even easier than color pencil, um, watercolor. Alright, I'm going to go over it again. No, we're not. <laughs> we need it to dry. We'll let it dry. I'll move on over to here. We'll let that dry a bit. And we'll come back and do a second layer. It will make it more vibrant when we do a second layer. Trying to make it a little more yellow here, probably a little more orangey where it's farther away from the light.
You'll not want to set your hand in, once you've done this, you won't want to set your hand on the water-based marker. It will lift on your hand and then it will set itself down somewhere else on your paper. <laughs> so be careful. Okay. All right, let's see if it's dry over here. I think it's dry. We're going to we're going to attempt a second layer here. It should be more vibrant. It was on my fish in the 50 ocean miniatures one. It did make it much more vibrant for the second. and on the test page as well. So. All right, so there we go. Let's see what it looks like in the camera here. Yeah, it is a bit, a little bit more vibrant. So I'm gonna go do the snake off camera, finish up the snake, and I'll meet you back here. It'll be like a second for you for the Crayola section of the video. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we are back with the snake done. It's nice and vibrant. It's poppy. It will probably even pop off more off the page once we have the other colors around it. Yellow is usually, you know, where your eye goes to. Yellow and white. Usually your eye goes to the thing on the page that's lightest, that's biggest and lightest and brightest. So think of that. But you can also... If you want to do a reverse focal point, you could do that too. Maybe make the background super bright and have dark colors in the foreground. That works as well too. Um, so yeah, two coats of the Ahuhu water-based markers on here. And I didn't tell you those numbers, so I brought them over. We've got 28, 31, and 32. Hopefully it's focusing. There we go. For, and this is just a kind of a yellow orange. It wasn't full on orange and then a darker yellow and of course a lighter yellow In case you were wondering All right, and so I've changed my mind a little bit since having done the snake. Oh my gosh. It's so easy it's so quick and so easy and Do remember though To put a paper towel under your hand anywhere You're gonna lay it on the paper after you put this stuff on there though so I haven't yet tried to fix one of these, but I really should because I need to fix every coloring I've ever done. I have yet to use fixative on them, although I have fixative. I'm just too lazy to go outside in the sun and do that. So 
So yeah, but I, I think I'm going to do a hoo-hoo over this just because it's so easy. And I want to try it. I want to give it a try on a full page. So a real run for the money. And I did a really good job, like I showed you, uh, learning from experience. Don't squirt the satin glazing liquid on there. makes it too thick. Just dip it and have two thin coats because the application again here with the satin glazing liquid was perfect on this page. So let's talk about colored pencil on top of satin glazing liquid. So I'm going to do my, I'm not really going to, I'm going to demonstrate on a piece of paper I have over here just because I'm going to do the background. I may do the whole thing in, in color pencil just because I like color pencil, <laughs> but I'm going to do the background. I'm going to do the background in purples and we have, we have a moon up here. So it's going to kind of go from lightest purple to black as it fades, as it fades across the paper. And there's not, this should be an easy background because there's not a huge amount of background here, but just a tip for you, nine times out of 10, I will do, I will lay in the background first because the background kind of dictates, that might not be the best word, or informs perhaps, informs the colors you're gonna use on top of it. And thus you're not gonna have any conflicts necessarily. I have students all the time, although I'm teaching ceramics now, not drawing and painting, but a year and a half ago, all the time students bring, bring me their work. They did the foreground first and I warned them. <laughs> I always warn them, they never listen. They'll be, Mrs. Robot, I don't know what to use in the background because I use this, this, they used every color in the pencil box and I can't use it here because it won't stand out. I can't use it here because it won't stand out. I'm like you're going to have to make a decision and some, some place isn't going to stand out now because you did it in reverse. So I like to do the background first just because it eliminates a lot of those problems that can happen. So let's talk about on satin glazing liquid treated paper. And I, you know, I surprised myself even now, even though I've said it and I wrote it in my notes and I showed you guys, I wrote it in my notes, <laughs> you know, of when I was doing it and I'm going to do it for you here live. Actually, I'm going to zoom you in now so you can see. So here on the, this is this, this is this, this is our satin glazing liquid test page that probably has too much satin glazing liquid on it. This is Crayola right here, and I'm going to do it live for you so you see. And this is, even if we get closer, can we? Will my thing go closer? This is it on a regular sheet of paper here. I hope you can see how much darker and more sat you can in real life. And hopefully you can here, maybe even if I hold it up here. Super close for you. Hopefully you can see the difference in saturation level on the two papers. And this is just naked paper here. And then here's Prismacolor on the naked paper. And look at how close the Crayola is to the Prismacolor. Now the Prismacolors are different colors. There wasn't exact color matches here, but this is a more blue base purple and we have a little bit of the pink base uh, red base purple there so look at that that is pretty you're, from your your Crayola color pencils we all know how inexpensive they are they almost look they almost look and feel like Prismacolor I'll show you here's the Crayola all kind of their washed out less intensity there's something about the satin glazing liquid and when I, and I'll try, oh, this is Prismacolor Black here. When I do it, when I do the Prismacolor on the satin glazing liquid, oh, oh, I'm not in camera. Let me do that again for you. When I do it on the satin glazing liquid, oh, it's like, you can do it. And it looks nice and intense, probably even more intense than it looks there. I don't know, it's hard to see in the camera, but. It's very pastel-y. I don't particularly like pastels. They're just all, eh, they have a lot of dust. 
And I mean, you can do Prismacolor, but it's uh, it's just so soft and ugh, icky. Anyway, so I'm going to demonstrate it for you here, just so you believe me. And these are the colors I'm going to do my background. Now, for my test here, the Prismacolors I use on regular paper, and they worked well on this paper. This is copy paper from school, and they work pretty well. I used the Prismacolors were black, uh, in di dioxazine purple hue. I don't know if you can see that. PC-132, violet, this is an old Prismacolor, so the numbers are different. It's from my 25-year-old Prismacolors. Um, Parma violet, lilac, and... This is also, I've got it written there, grade lavender. I sharpened it from the wrong end. This is a, this again is another 25 year old Prismacolor. Um, and they didn't come sharpened. I accidentally sharpened that one from the wrong end in those days. So those were the Prismacolors I used on the, on the, on the kind of the head to head comparison here. Now, my Crayolas, I have the 120 set. Well, I actually have a 24 set. I have, which I bought to experiment with because I didn't want to invest in a whole bunch of pencils if it wasn't going to work. So I experimented with 24 set. That's the one you see in my nice little town book. And you can see that in my uh, 2021 Greatest Hits, my favorites. Um, and then I ordered the 120 set and I went out of town and my cousin gave me a 50 set <laughs> when I was out of town. If I'd have known that, I probably wouldn't have ordered the 120 set, but so those are the prism, uh, the Crayola color pencils that I have. Now, the colors that we used for this one here, that's going to be my background in the dragon book. I don't know if they'll show up, but I'm using black. The best pencil name ever. I don't know if they're going to show for you. is outer space it says outer space that's the next one i may just list them i don't think it's going to show for you this is plum this is violet or purple this one is purple heart periwinkle and white so that's a seven a seven color blend that i'm going to do let's see here where it's how's it going to be most comfortable here so i'm going to do a head-to-head -head comparison right here crayola get where i can see the camera and what i'm doing crayola here on the satin glazing liquid and crayola on the naked paper all right so here we go. So you can immediately see, hopefully, we are in close enough there. I feel like my camera's going to go in and out because it's focusing on... Let me back it up a little. It gets confused between my hands and the pencils. And there's not much I can do about it. Come on, focus, focus. Oi. All right, well, we're blurry, but we'll have to persist. This is outer space I'm using now.
I guess it's a good thing I uh, did it off camera because I have a, cat, a crappy phone. This next color was plum. Come on. Oh, we'll focus on my hand. Come on. And then we've got Violet. And I didn't sharpen my pencils before doing this. If I did, I could probably go in and get a lot of those little white spaces out. Yeah, I can. Which you see in the... We'll just do that. There's no amount of making this darker here. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, it just gets tired. There's no amount of making that darker. All right, then we have Purple Heart. I thought it was reading the words on this book. And we have Periwinkle. And white. Even the white works. I mean, usually the white in a Crayola pack is completely useless, but the white works fairly well. It's not Prismacolor white, but here on this paper it's completely useless. Okay, so let's get you in focus there. Let's see if we can get that in focus. Maybe. Why are you not focusing? There we go. All right. So live demonstration of how I would do the background, just blending, you know, one color into the next. And it's just so much more intense. Hopefully you can see that. The intensity is so much more on par with Prismacolor. Let's get a focus there. On par with Prismacolor intensity. All right, so the plan is I will, not tonight because it's late, but I will go do the background here and I'll bring it back and show you. Maybe I'll bring one of my Prismacolor backgrounds. I'd don't think I have a purple Prismacolor background, but uh, to compare, and we'll see we'll see how Crayola did on top of satin glazing liquid. All right, so I'll see you in just a second. Okay, we're back with a colored background, although there's not, not a lot of background in this picture, so it was pretty easy to color, and. I don't remember where I left off. I remember having trouble like getting my phone to focus before, so we'll try it again here. Here is the Crayola colored pencil on the satin glazing liquid background, and here's Prismacolor on a regular, just a regular piece of paper. 
pretty close in intensity there. And then I did the test for you. Oh, here's... I never color as good on camera as I do just sitting at my desk doing it. Here is a comparison of Crayola on satin glazing liquid and Crayola on just regular paper. Not nearly as intense. I hope that comes across. In real life, it's there's a drastic difference. Um, the Crayolas are still beautiful. They're just not as saturated, I guess we'll say. And I did, I did both of those on camera for you, which are probably not as well done, but just to, just to show... Now I'm having trouble getting it in the thing. Just to show, I did make it up. Okay, so we have our background here. Oh, I did use, instead of a white um, Crayola colored pencil here, I did use Prismacolor because Prismacolor white. And yeah, um, but it's a fade. It's a fade of those six purple colors in the white all the way to black and just to show you we can have a head-to-head -head comparison here uh, like I said you know the Crayola on top of the satin glazing liquid has that Prismacolor look for the most part and I had to look through so many books to find some purple Prismacolor here but we do have kind of a head-to-head -head comparison we got Kirby Roseanne's paper with some purpley colors and it's pretty you know it's pretty on on target as far as saturation level goes so getting your prisma uh, your crayolas to function a little bit like prisma colors is doable under the right circumstances and it's a good way to you know be able to use our amazon paper which can be kind of difficult for coloring pencil Although it's good for a lot of other mediums. So. so yeah, so there we go. That concludes my satin glazing liquid on Amazon paper with water-based markers and Crayola colored pencils. I thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you next time. Live long and prosper. Bye-bye.